Hello everyone, welcome to another exciting episode of Day Spring Discussions. I'm your host, Sean McGahey, and this is a show where we talk about movies, TV, sci-fi, fantasy, comic books. If you geek out about it, we're going to talk about it. You can listen to Day Spring Discussions on YouTube, iTunes, Podomatic, and Patreon, and contact Day Spring Discussions on the Facebook group, Twitter account, and dayspringdiscussions at gmail.com. Well, happy Monday, everyone, and it is done. This year's San Diego Comic-Con is over, and my goodness, was there a lot. A lot of info, a lot of trailers, a lot of news. It honestly went better than what I thought it was going to go. So I am here to do kind of a review. Now, there's a lot of stuff to talk about, a lot of stuff that I want to talk about. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to break it up. Today, I'm going to do half. Tomorrow, I'm going to do half. And then from then on... We can just get over it. I put a poll up on the Facebook group, guys. If you want to go check it out, it's about that little date, December 21st, where there are three, if not more, movies that I want to see coming out on the exact same day. You got Aquaman, the Bumblebee film, and Alita Battle Angel, which just got another trailer today. I'll talk about that tomorrow. But a bunch of good movies coming out December 21st. Doesn't look like anybody's budging, so we'll wait and see how that is. But go on, on the Facebook group, check out my poll, and the question is, which movie out of all the movies coming out on December 21st are you going to see first? Not if you're going to see them, if you're going to see them first, okay? So go online, check that out. Okay, guys, so today what I'm going to do as far as the first half of covering Comic-Con is I'm going to go with DC. Now, I said before Comic-Con that DC and Warner Brothers really had to come out strong with their film stuff, okay? They have had a couple of disappointing films, and they really have been shaky as far as their future plans, what they're going to do. It's all an upheaval. We know we had Aquaman on the way, Shazam, and Wonder Woman 2. So really what I wanted from Warner Brothers was more faith in their projects, even future plans that are actually going to happen. Now, there was a couple things. First off, I believe it was a day or so before Comic-Con, they did set a date for the Joaquin Phoenix Joker movie. It's going to be directed by Todd Phillips and produced by Martin Scorsese. They actually set a date for that. I believe it's October of next year. Don't quote me on that. Um, With that, you know, I haven't been a big advocate of that project, but... You know, I'm willing to see what it's going to come, especially now that they've renamed the DC Universe Worlds of DC. It's no longer the DCEU or the DCFU. It's Worlds of the DC, and that kind of opens them up to not just a cinematic linear universe, but also multiverses, as we say in the comic book world. So you can have a Joaquin Phoenix Joker in one movie and then have a Jared Leto in another one, and it's a different universe but i was a bit disappointed that we didn't have any new news okay there was nothing about a man of steel 2 or uh batman or anything like that which makes me think that warner brothers and dc are still a little hesitant about their future projects chris pine gal gadot and patty jenkins were there talking wonder woman 2 i think they showed some footage we didn't get any online but i'm not sure they were talking about it i have no worries about Wonder Woman 2. You got pretty much the original crew coming back from the first film, so I have no doubts about that one. Shazam and Aquaman, of course, I think are kind of the big question marks for Warner Brothers and how they're going to do. If they don't do well, I think they cancel and, you know, don't do anything in this cinematic universe past Wonder Woman 2, I think is what that comes down to. So that's why maybe we didn't get any more announcements about any future projects. They're still very hesitant, and that's always been Warner Brothers' problem, is they are hesitant with their material. They have no faith in their material. It just bugs me, I guess. So anyway, let's get to the good stuff, the stuff that we did get as far as DC and Warner Brothers. So starting off, I want to start with something that came out. I think it was either Wednesday or Thursday it started off with, and that was... Titans. We got our first look at the live action series that's going to be on the DC streaming service known as DC Universe. So they also come out with pricing for the universe now. It's going to be $7.99 a month or you get $74.99 for the whole year. I went ahead 
and signed up for it. Despite what Titans is going to be, um, everyone knows I'm looking forward to Young Justice Outsiders, plus the fact that you get all the archive stuff and archive comic books, movies, TV, it's all going to be good. So at least for a year, I think it's going to be worth it for me just to check it out. But Titans is kind of what this service is leading with here. So kind of just going through the trailer a little bit. It's funny because when you go on YouTube, they have the mature content rating. Like you have to click the, you know, yes, I am old enough to watch this trailer before you even go through it. Now starting off with it, you have Raven and she's at the circus, Haley Circus, with the Flying Graysons and she hunts down Dick Grayson who looks like is a little older and possibly a police detective, which makes sense. Now from this trailer we get a sense that he no longer is Batman's partner, sidekick, call it what you will. Especially from the big moment in this trailer when he says, Fuck Batman! And I cannot tell you how many memes I've seen of that phrase, and I've laughed at most of them, to be honest. And then you got him, he throws a little R against the wall, and, you know, to me that was kind of an homage to, like, Batman Begins when Christian Bale throws the bat against the wall. So it was like, eh, a little cheesy, kind of almost a direct copy. And then you have him jumping in there, saving criminals, um, they're asking where's Batman and he says fuck Batman I get that Dick Grayson and Raven were good I think um, especially I'm very curious Dick Grayson has always been one of my favorite characters in comic books in general just his storyline the way he's matured from a kid to a man from being you know a sidekick to his own hero someone well respected in the DC superhero universe so you know and i think with raven she didn't look like they went over the top with her she was simple but she had her powers going on that's fine but what really just drove in just like the oh my god beast boy i know those are the two toughest characters to pull off okay i get it they're very different looking you know you Robin is just a guy in a costume. Raven just has little pale skin, purple hair. But Starfire has purple, has orange skin, and Beast Boy has to have green fur. It looks like this is some kind of cosplay, like green makeup on him. It just doesn't look good at all. Now, what was cool, we did get a kind of a little bit of a glimpse of Hawk and Dove. I'm not too familiar with those characters. I'm not a big fan of them. I read them in J Jeff John's Brightest Day. And that's really how I'm familiar with them. So I'm not super excited, but, you know, they did look like they were kicking ass. And this whole trailer was very violent, of course. So and they're trying to go for that mature content, get you a little something different, because I think we're looking at the opposite. Because you have Robin, Beast Boy, Starfire, and Raven about to come out with a movie this weekend called Teen Titans Go, which is aimed for kids. And this is honestly the opposite spectrum. I remember... I'm going through Young Justice, still in season one, and my daughter, who's five years old, who loves Teen Titans Go, has kind of watched it a little with me because she sees Robin, she sees Kid Flash, she sees these familiar characters from Teen Titans Go in Young Justice. Now, thankfully, it's not as bad as a trailer like this, but I can see where you have total, two different aspects going on with this. So the trailer for me was half and half. I liked half of it. I didn't like half of it. I'm still going to, you know, of course, watch the show. I signed up for the service. I'm still excited to see how this whole DC Universe streaming service is going to uh, go as well. So for now, I'll say I'll give it a chance. Now, speaking of the DC streaming service, the thing that I was most excited for was Young Justice Season 3, otherwise being titled Young Justice Outsiders. There was a panel on it at Comic-Con, I believe on Friday. They showed the trailer and then it immediately posted online. I love Young Justice. It's one of my favorite superhero animated series. I mean, I like it more than the Batman animated series. I'm not saying overall a general consensus that it's a better art or a better show than Batman the animated series. But for me personally, I believe it is. I get more enjoyment out of it 
So I was super excited to see that they were coming back on the streaming service. It's probably about 60% why I streamed up, I signed up for the streaming service was to get my third season of Young Justice. So this trailer, I was a little disappointed because over half of it is them reviewing the end of season two, which a lot of Comic-Con trailers like that do review. I understand, that's fine, but the trailer runs at about five minutes and over two and a half of it is review. So not a huge fan of that. But the new stuff they did show, I kind of liked. You know, it looks like Nightwing it might not be Nightwing anymore. Maybe just Dick Grayson. He's pulling Artemis into a job along with Superboy. And it looks like Black Lightning. I'm very curious what they're going to do with Black Lightning. Given the fact that he is a more prominent character because of the CW show. Um, I'm curious, you know, if they're going to bring him more to light in the animated series. Or at least in this series a little bit. And it looks like the whole season revolves around metahuman trafficking. And I like how the um, the girl that was captured or whatever in the news report was Princess Tara. Now, Tara, I think they're going to play off um, the character from Titans or Teen Titans, who was a big uh, part of the Judas Contract storyline. Possibly do that. Um, but overall, like I said, the new stuff we're seeing looks like, you know, they're going on covert missions, but you got a lot of action going on here, showing you the barrage of characters. Looks like everyone's coming back. And it gives you a little sense of the storyline, but not a lot. Um, of course, the show doesn't come out till 2019, so we have a little bit of time. Maybe the next trailer I think will be a little good. This is just, you know, getting people more hyped up. Guys, if you haven't watched Young Justice Seasons 1 and 2, otherwise known as Young Justice and Young Justice Invasion, check it out. If you're in the area, let me know. I'll let you borrow it because it's good superhero DC stuff. I truly enjoy it, so let me know. And yes, before I get to my next story, I'm going to let you guys know I am saving Shazam and Aquaman trailers for the end of this episode. So I got a few more pieces of the DC news I want to get to, and then I'll get to it. So just hang in there, guys. Uh, just a little longer. Sticking with the streaming service, they also announced that they have a fourth live-action series that is going to be on there. First, you have Titans. Then you have Doom Patrol, which is going to be a spinoff from Titans. And then Swamp Thing, which I don't think has anything to do with the others. Now they said they're bringing in a Stargirl series. Now, the series will feature Courtney Whitmore uncovering the secrets of her family and the Justice Society of America. The character was created by Jeff Johns back in 1999, and Stargirl's appearance and mannerisms are said to be inspired by Johns' sister, who was a victim of the TWA Flight 800 in 1996. No word yet as far as when it's going to be premiering. I'm assuming sometime in 2019. Uh, looks like we'll probably get Titans, Doom Patrol, then Swamp Thing, and then let's not forget that as far as original programming, we're also going to get Young Justice Outsiders and Har Harley Quinn animated series, um, as well as other content. Like they said, the Justice League animated series is going to be on there, Batman Begins, uh, Constantine, all the Christopher Reeve Superman movies, um, Batman Beyond, just a whole bunch of slew of stuff. Like I said, it's $7.99 a month or $74.99, and I'm curious too now because I know all the DC animated movies are on Hulu, as well as the Batman animated series and Superman animated series. You can find those on Amazon Prime. I wonder if DC Warner Brothers is going to pull those from those streaming services and put them on this one to where it's the only place you can watch them. But that's going to be another one. Stargirl is a character I know I'm not too familiar with, to be honest. I know of her. I know what she's about. Um, of course, I'm going to check it out because it's a comic series and I'm paying for the service anyway, so I might as well get the most out of it. Guys, okay, getting off the streaming service and going to another TV show that is DC related, Krypton. They announced during their panel that the second season will add the main man, aka Lobo. That's right, the sci fi series is bringing the fan favorite Lobo for the show Krypton in its second season. Now Lobo is the last of an alien race and he is a space motorcycle riding mercenary who loves to curse, smoke cigars, and deliver a bloody beatdown with his trusty chain and impressive firepower. 
No actor has been set cast in the role, and the character is set to have quite an impact in the second season. Krypton, guys, if you haven't watched season one, do it, okay? I got a buddy of mine who we were big Smallville fans together, and I'm going to his wedding this weekend. I told him to watch Krypton. If he hasn't watched Krypton, I'm going to be severely disappointed in him. If you guys haven't watched Krypton, check it out. It's really good. Um, definitely one of the better, I think, comic book series out there right now. Really cool. And the fact they're adding Lobo. Lobo is such a fun character. I wouldn't say I'm a big fan of his, but he's such a fun character to interact, especially given the fact that he interacts with Superman a lot. And they're both just opposites on the side of morality. It's why they play so well off each other. I'm very interested to see how they're going to bring him in, what's he going to look like, all the details and stuff like that. But Lobo and Krypton adding another Superman character to Krypton along with General Zod, Brainiac, Adam Strange. I'm excited for Season 2 of this series. If you haven't checked it out, please do so, guys, and do yourself a favor. Okay, so last thing, well, two more things, actually, before I get to the uh, trailers, the main reason you actually wanted me to do this, guys, I understand. So DC Animated is coming out with a animated Batman Hush film. They just released or are going to release The Death of Superman, which I've already seen. I've shared my thoughts on it on here, so you can check that out. But they're doing an animated movie based on the storyline Hush, uh, it's based off the 12-issue series by Jeff Loeb and artist Jim Lee. And, of course, that book is all about Jim Lee's art. It brings in a bunch of characters such as Catwoman, Joker, Harley Quinn, Poison Ivy, Nightwing, Huntress, Riddler, even Superman. Jim Lee pulls them all in and just, you know, it's really just showing off what a great artist he is and just how awesome it is. And this storyline introduces the villain known as Hush, who, if you don't know, is a childhood friend of Bruce's who suffered a similar tragedy as him and then he goes out to of course makes Bruce's life miserable his own dark twisted version of Batman it's it's a good storyline you know you know I wouldn't say I love it but it's definitely something that if you call yourself a Batman fan you should check out the fact that they're going with an animated series of this definitely makes sense because it is a, a popular storyline it's a good storyline that you can really have some meat on to do something with i'm very curious the animation style because a lot of times with these movies they try to mimic the artistry of the comic with the animation style so i'm curious if they're going to try to mimic jim lee's style of art with that animation but that's going to be coming guys so go check that out last thing before i talk about shazam and aquaman um, the CW shows gave us some trailers for their series. I wasn't highly impressed actually with about half of them because I feel like GC's Legend of Tomorrow and Black Lightning was really just a review. And that's a lot of times what these Comic-Con trailers are because they just started shooting the new seasons usually around July. So they didn't have a lot of new stuff to show us. I understand but, you know, if they're going to do that, I'd rather than make the trailers shorter. But any event, those who I weren't too impressed with, Supergirl was okay, but I've been so down on Supergirl this past season, I really didn't find any of it exciting. Probably the two best ones, I thought, were Flash and Arrow. I thought those gave us the most information about the upcoming seasons, especially with Flash, the twist on it about how their daughter Nora has shown up. There's a lot of good storyline to play with in that. There's a spot in the trailer where I feel like Barry is asking her about pretty much his death because we know there's that newspaper headline. It was in the very first episode where Flash disappears in the middle of crisis or something like that. And it's like 2025, I think, is when it's dated. Obviously, Nora is coming from a time past that, possibly a place where her dad is dead. And I think Barry wants to ask her the question about, you know, what happened to him or if he ever showed back up or what like that. But again, a lot of good character stuff, a lot of good story can happen along with this. Now, it's also um, been announced that Chris Klein... American Pie alumni is going to be playing the villain in this season. At the end of this trailer, you got a little bit of a tease of him with the like 
Spear Lightning Bolt. He's going to be playing the villain known as Sidas. I can't remember. I, okay, what's his name? Hold on, I'll get this. See Sidas? Uh, okay, I give up. Anyway, uh, in the <laughs> comics, this character is known as David Hirsch, who uh, is filled with regret after murdering his wife when he was struck by lightning. As a result, he gained the ability to absorb life force of others, allowing him to dramatically extend his life. Now, he also goes around and basically kills everyone that the Flash has saved using lightning bolt-shaped daggers. Again, interesting character, interesting storyline. The Flash took a break this season from Speedsters with the Thinker. I thought it worked okay, maybe not so much, but really the Flash hasn't popped for me since the second season. Third season I thought was really bad. This last season was decent. Um, I'm hoping this fifth season, given all the things they had to play with, they'll do more with. So I have high hopes for that. Arrow, again, something where they're giving a new spin on it. Oliver outed his identity officially, and he's in prison. He's in with a bunch of people that he put there. And then the team is trying to function on the outside world without him. I loved last season Arrow with Black Siren. Her arc, the way you know she pressed on, and I think she's hit a turn. I'm curious to see where she goes. I still think I want to get rid of the B team, you know, get rid of Mr. Terrific and the Black Canary and uh, Wild Dog. That's his name, Wild Dog. Yeah, I think that's his name. But to me, they are insignificant to the show and are just dead weight, in my opinion. But again, that's probably the one I'm second uh, most excited about as far as the CW shows from what I saw at Comic Con. Um, hopefully we'll get more as time goes on with Black Lightning and all that stuff, guys. But uh, go check out at least the trailers online for Arrow and Flash because they're pretty decent. Okay, well, that's about wrapped it up, right? I'm done? Nothing else to talk about, right? That's it. Covers everything DC that happened at Comic-Con, right? Oh, that's right. There were a few other things called Shazam and Aquaman that happened. Okay, so let's go Shazam first, guys. Uh, with this one... It looks like they're playing off of the Jeff Johns storyline that came out a couple of years ago with Billy Batson. Although in that storyline, Batson was a little bit of a, um, what I want to say, prick in that storyline. So I wasn't a big fan of it. This one, they're definitely taking that lighter tone. And you can see as well, though, they're definitely inside the DC cinematic universe. You can't call it what? Worlds of DC? That sounds weird to call it Worlds of DC. I can't, I can't deal with that. No, I'm sticking with DCEU for now, okay? But uh, you have his uh, foster brother, got an Aquaman shirt. You see the Batarang. You see the Superman headlines from the newspaper. So you're definitely inside this established DC universe with Justice League and Suicide Squad and all those other guys. So you're definitely inside that. And then... You see him in this one, Billy being a good kid. Um, you know, you see him kind of being chosen for the power of Shazam. And then for me, really is when the trailer kicks in. Now, a lot of people, when Zachary Levi was chosen to be Shazam, there's doubters. I mean, I, the people are still doubting him. Yeah, he doesn't have the big physique for it. But you know what? I watched all five seasons of Chuck, okay? Okay. Zachary Levi is the perfect choice for a big guy who is really a kid on the inside, okay? He's, you know, phenomenal for this, and this trailer definitely has a lot of charm, which I think Zachary Levi is going to be responsible for. And people, of course, are comparing it to Big, you know, the Tom Hanks movie, and that's what the creators of the movie said beforehand. This is pretty much Big with superpowers that's what it looks like you get a lot of laughs a lot of charm definitely something different from what we've seen in the dc cinematic movies dc shared universe i don't know what to call this thing anymore guys world of dc that does make sense right it's a world of dc right i think that's what we should call it i believe that's what we should call it anyway uh with this again a lot of charm i like the line where he's like hey uh sorry broke your window but at least we stopped the robbers and then he passes by the one person like yeah I'm a superhero. Again, it's all full of charm. I think Zach, thanks to Zachary Levi, and I think his relationship with his uh, foster brother is really going to determine 
how well this film is going to do. <laughs> but <laughs> sorry, I just watched the part where he's like, "Yay, I'm a superhero." But um, comes out April 2019. I don't know. I'm not a big Shazam guy, but again, I love Zachary Levi, and this trailer is definitely charming. It doesn't say like, "Oh yeah, I'm definitely excited for this to come out." I can't. I'm so excited. I'm. It has turned my meter farther to wanting to see it, but I'm still not jumping to see it. I guess you could say. And I'm very curious. The people who have been on board with the way Warner Brothers is doing the DC Universe, the Zack Snyder fans, I guess I will call them. I'm curious what they think about this trailer and what this does for the world of DC. That's right. I'll call it World of DC. I'll figure it out. World DC. I'm going to call that. Okay, we'll do that then. Anyway, I'm curious what they think about it. Okay, guys, here is the big one, Aquaman. They announced that this trailer was coming weeks in advance at Comic-Con. Our first look at the film, this is the first DC film coming out after, I guess you could say, disaster that Justice League was. And, you know, it kind of has a lot riding on its shoulders, but not too much. Now the fact that we know that Shazam and Wonder Woman 2 are in production and will be finished... There's no like, oh, one Aquaman has to do good or there'll be no more. You know, we already know there's more coming. Um, I think it's going to depend on all three of the films together as to how Warner Brothers is going to handle the rest of these DC superheroes or the DC Universe characters going forward. So with this one, I have not been completely on board. I love Aquaman. You know, Aquaman's a nickname of mine for a while. I love superheroes. I love the water. So obviously it's a nickname that I've been called for several years of my life. But the team together with James Wan, Jason Momoa, Amber Heard didn't excite me. I understand though, you got to bring Jason Momoa on to change the perception of Aquaman. You get can't just get another blonde haired you know good looking chiseled brad pitt type guy having jason momoa take on this character will change the public perception of aquaman totally understand that but i need to ask as a swimmer for many years all that hair is slowing you down bud okay cut the hair put on you know some like scuba gear or at least shave all the hair off your body which looks like you've done everything except for your face and i think you'll be a much faster swimmer that's just my advice for you but okay anyway back to the trailer starts off with his dad picking up his mom and they have him and you know setting up the origin story that we know and you know i love this part here with him where he's a kid and he's getting bullied which is it a rule in every superhero movie when the superhero is a kid they get bullied i remember that very vividly of course from the man of steel they showed several times where he was getting bullied actually and i feel like that's becoming kind of a cliche in a lot of superhero movies where they were bullied as kids i mean i guess you could say that too in the flash tv series there's a whole scene at the first episode where Barry gets beat up and is bullied, but anyway, I love the scene where you know he the shark tries to break the glass and he's got all the aquatic animals behind him. That's just a really cool shot, and his eyes turn a different color. That's really cool. And then you got him attacking the submarine, and you know he's out doing his thing, protecting the oceans. Looks like from like ocean terrorist or something like that. And then Mara brings him in to take on Orm, to take back the throne. Um, Amber Heard, I'm not a big fan of hers. And I wasn't excited, really, when she decided to be Mara. Her hair looks ridiculous. It's clearly, like, fake as hell. So I'm not excited about that. But the few lines, the two lines that she gives in the trailer, she actually pulls them off pretty well actually you know i was surprised you know the lines she said and how she said them kind of you know impressed me a little bit and then of course same thing with jason momoa not too bad either the whole thing looks very cgi like when you go to atlantis and it's all cgi which i know it's an underwater kingdom they talk underwater i get it it's going to be fake but 
looking at it and all the action stuff, it kind of looks like Avatar. I mean, I feel like I was stepping onto Pandora, in my opinion. But um, oh, I do like the crowd shot as well, where it's the shot of the Atlanteans seeing them fighting, and then they're like, "Yeah, that was pretty cool." But I want this movie to succeed. I love Aquaman. I want everyone else to love Aquaman. It's just going to depend on, you know, of course, the execution of it. You know, how do these characters... um, I don't think they're going to be the characters that I enjoy from the comic books. Oh, there's that one there, yeah, with... They uh, they dive into the deep and they have all the monsters uh, checking out. Guys, if you haven't checked out um, Jeff Johns' four-volume run on Aquaman, read it. That's really what I think... If you want to get turned around on Aquaman... That's what you need to read is that stuff. Okay, so go check that out. Um, oh, yeah, they got, what's his name? Plays Black Ma- uh, Manta. I'm expecting him. He is a great actor. Um, I think he's going to be good, but man, does that suit look bad. His Black Manta suit, I'm sorry, looks absolutely horrible. Um, they probably tried to go for as close to the comic as they could. I think they should have changed it up a little bit at least. But Nonetheless, um, at the end, of course, the end scene here, He's like, redheads, what are you going to do? I don't know. So, Aquaman trailer, it got me a little bit more, you know, excited. Not a lot, a little bit more. I wasn't over ecstatic about it, but I have a little bit more faith. Not a lot, but a little bit more faith. I mean, there have been plenty of movies that we've had great trailers for, and then they turn out to be crap. It sounds like I'm going to judge it too harshly now, but I won't. Um, you know, of course, maybe if I have low expectations, it'll be really good. I don't know, guys, but any events, that's it for today, guys. I covered all the DC stuff at Comic-Con. Now it's time for you guys to fire back because I need to quit talking because I have gone way over my normal time. Uh, I talked for over a half hour. How about that? So fire back. Let me know what you think. What was your favorite trailer? What was your face of favorite piece of DC news that came out of Comic-Con. I really want to know. Go to the Facebook group. Do my poll. December 21st. What movie are you seeing first? Let me know about that, guys. And like I said, tomorrow I'm going to do part two of Comic-Con coverage. Probably going to be just as long because there's a lot of stuff to cover. And I will talk about all the things non-DC that uh, happened at Comic-Con. So that's it. Fireback on the Facebook group, Twitter account, and of course, Day Spring Discussions at gmail.com. You can find me personally on Twitter and Instagram, Slim Day Spring 12. Until next time, may the Force be with us all.